Greetings to all of our viewers out there from the uh, town of Easton. And welcome to ECAT, Easton Community Access Television. I also welcome you to this very special interview to talk about the Oak Ames uh, Memorial Hall, located right here uh, in downtown Easton. It happens to be one of the important historical buildings in the town, and of course uh, also known as a National Historical Landmark. I'm Dave Clifton. I'm happy to be the moderator for today's interview, and uh, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to interview Fred Ames uh, from Northeastern Massachusetts. He happens to be the president, working closely with a board of trustees uh, for the Oaks Ames uh, Memorial Hall. Yes. And I also understand that uh, the name Ames is on that free library that you are also very much involved in. And it's quite obvious that uh, you come from a famous family, Fred, and that uh, it's related to the building's namesake, sake, uh, the Oak Ames Memorial Hall. I thought the best way that we could start this interview off is to let our viewing audience know uh, when was the hall uh, constructed and uh, what was its original purpose. Oh, okay. Uh, one clarification. Uh, I'm descended from the library, but I'm really not involved uh, in its day-to-day -day operation. But certainly we uh, enjoy them as, as, a, as a good neighbor. Um, the hall was built in 1881. It was finished in November 1881. Wow. And its purpose was to be, among other things, a pedagogical extension of the library. Uh, that's a quote for, for what, they, what they intended. And that was so there could be lectures, there could be vocational classes uh, for the uh, shovel workers and their wives, um, you know, to learn stenography. This is for the women to learn stenography and other office skills so they could get jobs in Boston. So they, they had a role in that. Uh, there also were lectures uh, on current events. There were uh, classes. Again, I know their language classes were very important because you had a lot of immigrant labor came in. Uh, and so they, they really took, uh, the shovel company took a real hand in that, uh, getting that done. And also, you know, the social aspect has always been big too. Uh, and that continues today. We're really doing um, what the hall was intended. I mean, no, no more classes uh, for English or anything, but it's always been one for, for gatherings, a, a town hall in that sense, so. My understanding is that you also do weddings Oh, we do weddings. Weddings, weddings are our are, are bread and butter. We, we love weddings. And it's a, it's a unique venue, and people like that, and it is at a reasonable price. And what we do is we let people, uh, you know, hire their own caterers, do all that stuff. You know, I'm sure people out there have experience where you get a price for a facility, and then you have to use their caterer, you have to use their photographer, you have to use all that, and, and slowly they sort of, you know, add, add the costs on. So we just, we just rent the space, tables and chairs, and uh, have it your way. You know, you can create what you want, so. If you just joined us, folks, we're interviewing uh, Fred Ames. He's very much involved with uh, the Oaks Ames uh, Memorial Hall right here in downtown Easton. And one of the purposes of this interview is to let folks know what the hall is used for and some of the issues that uh, they may be concerned. I'm talking about the trustees uh, to try to fix it up. There are some structural issues, Fred, that have to be addressed. And of course, this is a fabulous facility and uh, it's so important to fix it up. It'll be there for years to come. But what are some of the issues that uh, have to be addressed, and of course they cost money. Well, yes, and, and again, I joined the board in 1979, so uh, I've, I've been here a long, been there a long time. Uh, the, 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 there was an emergency that uh, there was a truss that uh, showed weakness in, in the building, and that a truss holds up the roof, basically. There are two trusses that hold up the roof, and there was weakness in one, 
So we went to town meeting and CPC uh, was, was very, very helpful in getting funds for fixing the, the trusses, which was, I think, $486,400, um, which was beyond our means uh, to raise money. We have raised 140000 to complement what the town has done and hopefully reduce the amount that has to be drawn from the CPA. So we, we have been busy raising private funds to, to help out. Um, we anticipate uh, opening November 1st and then closing July 1st, pending a vote, town meeting vote, to approve an appropriation for funds at the May 2023 town meeting. And that will be for extensive res restoration. I mean, we could be closed up to two years for the amount of work that's to be done. Uh, there will be a, a parking lot installed behind the hall, um, which would accommodate 60 to 65 cars. There will be an elevator put in um, that from the first to the second floor to, to, we're handicapped accessible to the first floor, but not the second floor. There will be a new heating and air conditioning system put in. There will be complete rewiring of the building. It's a brand new kitchen. Uh, I could go on and on. It's really top to bottom. Uh, what we want to do is modernize the building, get up to all the codes, and really have a state-of-the-art art building that would attract more people, uh, increase the income uh, with, with uh, you know, more, more amenities. And that will make a big difference also. And you know, there is the uh, uh, tricentennial of Easton coming up in, nine, excuse me, 2025, right? When you get to be a certain age, you mix up your centuries, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, you know, the hall is, is a real showpiece. Uh, it's on various seals of, of, of different organizations in town. Um, it's in a very prominent location. And it's, it's historically famous because of Oaks Ames, who was a major financier of the Union, excuse me, of the Transcontinental Railroad. He was a congressman. He was Easton native. He, he grew up, born, and, born in Easton and grew up here. Um, and also, it's significant for the partnership with Frederick Law Olmsted and Richardson. And that you can see in that monumental staircase uh, in front of the building, which was um, done by Olmsted, and Olmsted selected the site. Uh, so as far as architectural history goes, it's also significant. So it's got a number of reasons why it's an important building. And uh, with the, with the f night, hopefully by 2025, when, when all the restoration is complete, it will be important uh, as a cultural center to attract, you know, with, with the performances, to attract people to the town, uh, which would be sort of an economic driver, you know, bring people to the town, cultural tourism, um, and again, play more of a vital role in the community as it, as it did in the past. And Fred, when you think about the history of the town of Easton, a uh, shovel comes up quite often. There's a shovel museum at Stonehill College here in Easton, but that's part of the history uh, that uh, people uh, think and talk about, as well as the uh, Ames name. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, especially appreciate uh, going to downtown Easton during the holidays when they have the lights up. Yes. And people have asked me, uh, Dave, the, the name Ames is on quite a few buildings here in the town. What's the uh, story behind the story? Well, uh, my family was very generous. Um, they, I, I, they had a real loyalty to Easton. I think that I'm just guessing, you know, that the, the, the shovels, you know, became the largest shovel company in the world. And I think they're very grateful and appreciative to the, the people in Easton who worked in the shovel company. And they just, they just, they just wanted to be generous. They, they had, had done quite well in business. Uh, and I think you get to my, my great grandfather's generation, they were interested in the arts, architecture, and that those buildings um, sort of served a, a dual purpose that way. Um, the lights and, and, and all that downtown, we have some, some good private uh, uh, benefactors, I think it's David Howe, has been instrumental in, in working on that. And of course the Lions, Easton Lions, have, have worked diligently, I think, since the 1980s. Uh, the largest the Lions Club uh, in New England, as far as I know, and it's amazing uh, uh, the number of uh, folks in town that are members of that organization. 
Their motto is, uh, we serve. Yes. And they certainly do lots of things above and beyond the call of duty. Fred, I did want to mention that the town administrator, Connor Reed, uh, was quoted as saying that uh, parking at the present time is around 12 vehicles. You mentioned uh, the plan is to put 60 in. And uh, I guess the question is, because he suggested 300 uh, would be appropriate for handling weddings and stuff like that, but uh, you must have a way, you and your board, of how you're going to deal with that uh, down the road. The important thing is you get all the structural things taken care of. Oh yes, the structural things, uh, uh, re refresh, you know, all the woodwork, painting, um, just again, it's, it's going to be it's going to be top to bottom. Everything is going to be looked at. We have, uh, we have a Masonic room on the third floor, which is the last original surface. That was, it looks like now what it looked like in 1881. Um, that will be restored. We also have a very large piece of theater art, which came from uh, New York City. Um, and that wow. was done in about 1870 something. So it's, it's a significant uh, piece of work, and that will be cleaned and um, so it's, it's, it's really going to be quite something when it's done, I mean, the building. I mean, it's, it's really going to be something we'll all be proud of. How about grants, uh, Fred? Do you have any intention of uh, seeking out some grants to help with the, uh, the cost of this project? Well, yes. Uh, we've raised 100000 of that 140, uh, one from um, Mass Historical Commission and the other from the uh, state budget. Uh, we've been we're very fortunate. We have good political representation, um, and that uh, um, oh gosh, I, I, yes, I'm sorry, I, I forgot a name. I, I wanted to to uh, to acknowledge uh, Walter uh, Timulty, it's our senator. He was very instrumental in that. Uh, one of our board members, <coughs> excuse me, is Suzanne Bump, who is currently the state auditor. Um, so between the two of them, they were they were very helpful uh, in securing funding for us. Uh, we have a number of private foundations we've gone to before and we'll go to again. Uh, there is the Mass uh, Cultural uh, Council, which, which uh, is a significant funder, and we will be approaching them. We've gotten funds from them in the past, and private donors as well. So we've, we've got a, a plan to, to raise as much Wonderful. money as we can privately. Yeah. If there's someone out there in our viewing audience, Fred, that uh, maybe won the lottery and would like to make a hefty contribution, uh, who would they contact? And do you have a web page? We have a we have a web page, or um, you know, they can contact me. There'll be that information. <clears throat> Excuse me. The web page is oaksamshall.org, and Oaks is spelled O-A-K-E-S. Um, so that, I think, makes a difference in the, in the, with the computer. I know that uh, we have the Tri-Town uh, uh, Centennial Celebration coming up in the year 2025. I know the town is looking for people to be on that committee. And I know that, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could have that uh, all completed, all the construction taken care of, so we can utilize that during the celebration and I know that uh, it's been close to your heart over the years, Fred, and thank God someone like yourself uh, has been involved, and uh, I'm sure you got lots of people on that board that you work with that uh, you'd like to recognize and thank them for their many years of service as well. Well, I, I again, I'm, I, I, have, uh, I have Tim Hurley, I have Gail Devins, I have um, Jason Sutton, and of course there is, um, um, I'm very terrible at remembering names when I, when, when I have to, uh, Suzanne Bump, and uh, recently my cousin Ollie Ames uh, was on the board, and he is a descendant of Oaks Ames, um, and a number of others. I mean, I, I look back over, what is it, 1979, it's 40, 43 years. Wow. Um, it's just amazing that the number of people that I have worked with on the board and the, and the good, good work they have done. Um, I remember in my, my first town meeting, I don't know, it was 77, 78, there was someone who retired. 
And he got up and he addressed the town meeting and he said, I just want to thank you people. I've met a lot of nice people. It's been a real pleasure to work and be involved in the community and thank you. And this was, that's what really got me thinking. You know, this is, this is something that, you know, I'd like to do. Gosh, you go back to the bicentennial year. Uh, that's a lot of years of service. And I know that uh, you met, uh, what, three times a week? Only kidding. <laughs> The fact is that this, uh, when you go through the town of Easton and you take a look at these buildings, you, you, you become amazed that uh, they were built strong, but uh, it's been around a long time and structural things happen. Uh, let's talk for a minute, Fred, if we may, sure. and maybe you have some of the cost that uh, it will take to do a project like this. Uh, you mentioned some of the things that need to be done, and it uh, takes funds to do it. And we want to give a nice thank you to uh, the town meeting for their contributions in the past. Oh, absolutely. And we hope that yeah. you'll support this project in the future. But what about the cost, Fred? Uh, as I said, the, the emergency for the uh, trusses, and again, those trusses are, are older than I am, they're, they're you know, 140 some years. So we, we had to expect that. The library went, bef went over a, a, a restoration before that and the Unitarian Church was the first. So it's almost chronologically just coming down Main Street. So, um, and that again was, it was 486,400 with um, the trustees contributing over 100,000. So hopefully that will reduce the cost of the town. Um, the major project where we will be closed for two years will be in the millions. I think probably uh, estimates right now are around $10 million. And this will come from the uh, CPA funds. It will be the largest uh, project that the, the CPC has done uh, to date. And we're very grateful to that, that the uh, CPA has been very supportive of the hall. Uh, they've really made a huge difference. There's been, I think, over the past seven to ten years, there's been a series of uh, grants from CPC and private donations and, and foundations as well. Uh, but certainly the CPC has played the major, the major part uh, in securing the exterior, you know, redoing the masonry, the windows, and all that. So, you know, to seal up, to make sure you got a good roof and, and you know, you're all waterproof. So, um, again, I, I just can't emphasize enough the, uh, how much we owe to the uh, CP, CPC, CPA. You had a uh, terrific architect uh, who was involved in the early stages many years ago. Do you happen to remember that name? Uh, well, uh, there was David Fixler. I don't know who was before then. If, if um, what, what era was this? this uh, Back in the uh, early 1800s. Oh, oh, well, the late 1800s. Yeah, H.H. Uh, Hen H. H. Henry Hobson Richardson. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the name that uh, I was trying to think of. Uh, there must be something, uh, Fred, that you and your board of trustees would like to bring to the attention of our Eastern residents. Something that I might not have covered during this interview. Uh, something that you would like people to know as we get closer and closer to town meeting and uh, as you get involved in the fundraising efforts, uh, there may be some things that you'd like to share with our viewing audience. Uh, can you think of anything on the top of your head that uh, you'd like to bring to their attention? Well, I, I think what's important to remember uh, is that, that, that the hall has played a significant role uh, in, the, in, the, in the life of the town. And what these restoration, these, this money is for to restore the hall is to increase the utility or the use of the hall for the citizens. So what we're looking for is to be a, a contribution to the quality of life in Easton and also to enhance uh, business, bring more money into town. Um, and really, uh, you know, it, it is a, we have these resources of these Richardson buildings, the Olmsted landscape, and something like the hall is, is sort of right at the center of it. It has the 
ability to draw people, obviously because of the large gathering rooms, so it can, it can play a large part in promoting cultural tourism. Because uh, what Easton has is, very, very few towns have what we have. Unbelievable. And, yeah, and now is the time to really take advantage of it. And starting with a hall is really a good way to, to start that process. Yeah. And the location. Can't miss of it. The right? hall, it's yeah. uh, unbelievable. I know that the town has had a, a few uh, interesting programs that have taken place in that general area, and to have that building in the background. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I notice people taking pictures of, uh, of their family members standing on the stairs. Oh, wedding wedding team. parties. We just wish they'd, they'd had their wedding in our hall, but we, you know, we certainly let them take photos, you know, on the on the steps. Were you married at this hall? No, I was. Okay. I, I was. <laughs> maybe next time, you know, who knows? <laughs> but uh, so yeah, no, that's good. And we're we're part. We're the performance and event center right now of the uh, Shovel Town Easton Shovel Town uh, Cultural Historic District, which is part of the Mass Cultural Council. You know that 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 program I mentioned, who is, has given us money in the past. And that, again, is the, the program. We are the cultural and events center for that. And we're, we're very pleased with that role. And we have the facilities, our upstairs uh, hall, which has very good acoustics. It's good for music performances, stage performances. So that's something we really want to highlight. And that will really be the attraction, uh, is that. And we have... Uh, Dottie Fulginetti, who is the chair of the select board, and she's also uh, our chair of this committee. Uh, and there are others, and we really, it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice committee to be on. A lot, of, a lot of good things going on. And there was a, a summer series, I don't know if some of you maybe saw that outside on the steps uh, on Wednesday nights. And it's, it's really quite, quite gratifying. This is our third year doing it, and it's growing every year. And uh, it's it's just just an example of sort of the the, the giving back the the hall wants to do to the community. It certainly intends to do. If for I, have, if I years, have anything to do with it, right? For a number of years, you used to have the holiday decorations uh, right there in front of the building. I know that uh, uh, a good active uh, member of the Lions Club, Ken Wood. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Spent a lot of time over there setting up the electrical stuff uh, and it was just a nice place to take the family and that's outdoors yes uh, that's not indoors but a lot of things happen inside as well um, i know that uh, i remember what gandhi once said and i think about you and i just met you today fred that uh, he once said uh, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of helping others. And I thank you so much for all the years that you have spent to uh, work with a board and to try to do what you can to give back to the community. And uh, I also met someone who just moved into town. I said, what's your last name? And he said, Ames. And I said, very appropriate that you moved to Easton with that last name. He has nothing to do with the family. Right. But right. the fact is that uh, I got a kick out of the fact that his last name was Ames. But uh, uh, you got a lot of work to do, Fred. Oh, tremendous amount and, of work uh, coming up, yeah. We in the community uh, would like to see that building uh, still continue. And once it's fixed up, I think the residents of the town and the, the young people who will be the future of the town will really appreciate that. And let's do what we can to make it happen. We thank the residents out there for whatever support you can throw uh, this way uh, yeah. during the uh, town meeting. It would be very much appreciated. And again, I'm going to ask you if you would give the web page okay. and the it's, contact people. Sure. It's Oaks, that's O-A-K-E-S, Oaks Ames Hall, that's all one word, dot O-R-G. And the contact person uh, on that is, is Joan Lundgren, and she would, will, will refer you to the, to the appropriate person. And one thing I want to add is the, the goal of this project is to fix up the hall so it's good for another 100 years. You know, that's why it's, it's expensive, but everything is going to be done. So it's, 
won't have to be done in, won't have to be done in our lifetime. So, but that's that's the, the level of quality uh, we're we're looking for in that work. And again, not only do we thank the town, we thank Fred, we thank his board of trustees, we thank the residents uh, here in the town Absolutely. of Easton for Absolutely. stepping up to the plate and doing what you can to contribute to this important cause. So let me uh, shake your hands, Fred. Well, thank you for, for Fred Ames. Uh, bringing my name up with Gandhi. I, I, that's a first. Anyway. And uh, remember, folks, to do the best you can to support the Oak Ames Memorial Hall. And uh, this uh, cable cast has been a production of ECAT, Eastern Community Access Television. We say to folks out there, continue to do what you can to give back to the community and to serve others. Have a terrific weekend.